Welcome back to the Youth Got Next podcast. Excited to be here. My name is Miles Richardson. I'm sitting here with our guest today. Nathan Nelson. Nathan Nelson. And we're doing something a little bit different today instead of walking through the Wayfinding Bible as we have been and will continue to do. Today, I just wanted to sit down um, and get to know Nathan a little bit better, um, let you guys get to know Nathan a little bit better. Um, And so as we dive in, um, Nathan, just from the get-go, here's what I want you to do is we set out six candies um, here. We just got through Halloween, right? This is just our leftover Halloween candy. And what I need you to do is order these candies from best to worst, like move them around on the table, do what you need to do, best to worst, and you have five seconds. Go. That one's pretty, five seconds. Five seconds. Five, oh my gosh, that's four, controversial. Three, <laughs> two, good enough. One, locked in. Yeah, locked in. This is okay. The best. That's the worst. That's best to worst. Yeah. So best is Snickers. Yeah, big Snickers guy. Yeah, they're better cold though. Better cold yeah. in the fridge or the freezer. Fridge, fridge. Okay, Starburst. Food. Yeah, I just eat them with the wrapper on. No, you don't. <laughs> I do. Uh-uh. I swear, I'll do it right now. Maybe later. Okay. Best flavor. Uh, yellow. Uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> yellow. Okay, Skittles. Tell me about it. Middle, middle of the yeah, table. Just, just, lime yeah. is back, though. I'm a big, big okay. lime Skittle okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't like the purple ones, even though they all taste okay. the same. Fair. No, they definitely don't. No, they what, don't. But what if they all taste the same? Why do you hate the purple? Well, because they're purple. I love purple. It's okay. my favorite color. Okay. I just don't like the Skittles. M&M's coming up on the beginning of the bottom of the table. Yeah, Not a big just, chocolate guy? Just okay. It's just, it's just plain chocolate. I just chocolate. don't like the, the, the shell, man. I like chocolate. Okay. Like Peanut M&M's. I mean, I, I like peanuts. I like M&M's. I just don't think they should mix. Okay. That wow, that is controversial. Yeah. But most controversial, yeah, Twix, Twix is dead last. I just you had I, five seconds, and that was the first move. Snickers to the top, Twix to the back. I've never liked Twix. It's like never have. Man. Like it's just like ugh. Twix are the top chocolate candy for me. I yeah. just love that the the cho- or the, the the caramel on top. The caramel's good. I just don't like the little cookie bit. The cookie. Mm. Kills okay. It for me. Well, um, thanks for that. You can have all that candy. That's okay. that's all yours for for later. Awesome. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, Nathan, I, we just want to ask you a couple questions, get to know you a little bit better past just your, your favorite candy yeah. orders. Um, how long have you been coming to high street youth? High street youth. It's been about eight months because I moved mm. here about nine months ago. Okay. And we went looking for a church for a little while and this high street was actually the second one we tried. My okay. dad and I went and he absolutely loved it. Mm. And I did not at first, but Mm. I mean, I'm happy to be here now. Mm. So So something changed. I mean, you're here, you're on our podcast. You've been hanging out for, for nine months. What is it that, what is it that changed? What's your favorite part of High Street Youth? So whenever I first come in, I saw this huge group, Mm. 12 or so youth leaders, and Mm. it was, it just looked like chaos. I thought Mm. it was the stupidest thing. Um, But I mean, I, I I love it now. Um, Mm. As fun as the large group can be, I still say my favorite part would be small groups. Okay. It's easier to learn stuff and mm. you get to get to know the person more uh, personally mm. and uh, get to have a relationship with them while you're going yeah. through this. Yeah. Um, having been from a small town, you know, there's uh, my youth pastor would, if I had a question, I could just ask him. Mm. And I can't do that during the large service. I can't. Yeah, don't just, interrupt our, our yeah, service, but you, you guys, can ask us after. Exactly. You guys get on a roll and you guys do really well, but I still would say small groups. Small part. groups. Small groups. Absolutely. Hey, I love small groups personally. Yeah. And I do agree. You walk in on Wednesday for the first time and nine squares going on, ping pong's happening, yeah. pool's happening. There's a few kids that sometimes just run around and and you're like what's what's going on here some people are all about that they're like yes i want to party yeah and then you know maybe it can look a little intimidating but yeah. um small groups is Very i love far. small groups he's he's in my small group so i'm a little i'm a little biased but um the best so small group small groups is the favorite um so nathan you have a relationship with jesus you're yeah. saved um tell me when did you start your relationship with jesus what did that kind of look like I have been given a relationship with Jesus since I was about nine. Mm. I've always had the chance because it's it's been in my house forever. Mm. Both my parents are saved. My whole family is really. Mm. Um, I went into my old church back in Anderson, Missouri, mm. um, in a three-person class for our little 
uh, Team Kid. You guys have Kid Street. We have Team Kid. Oh, oh same same thing basically. Same thing. Kid Street, Team yeah. Kid. Um, except for we only had three kids in there, counting me. So two other ones. A little different. Then. Yeah, little it was different. a lesson about heaven and hell, and I guess you could say it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> um, I mean, there's no better way to put it. Uh, you know, it just I listened through it, and mm. then she, um, you know, talked about afterwards. She's saying, well, if you don't want to live this out, don't want to live this way, you can, but you know what happens afterward. And I was like, mm. oh, I don't want that. Nobody mm. wants that. Mm. So she led a prayer. Um, I said it to myself, and I actually didn't tell anybody for years. Mm. Um, I told her much later on, and she actually ended up crying when I mm. told her, sweet lady, I love yeah. her to death. Um, but that that's when I got saved is in that classroom. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Um, Three people in the room. Yeah. I have an in-hell lesson with three people is a little intense probably. A little but, bit. But hey, that's when God moved. That's Honestly. when God worked on yeah. you. And you've been saved ever since, which yeah. is amazing. Um, what have you seen change in your life since getting saved? How has God kind of worked in your life? Well, uh, stuff at home can get stressful. You know, my mm. parents are split. And uh, they didn't have the best relationship. They'd argue and stuff. And mm. that kind of come back on us, uh, mm. me and my brothers. Mm. And I ended up going with my dad. They went with my mom. So mm. I was just with my dad. Mm. And I wanted to stay home. Mm. And, you know, I was a bit of a troubled child, I guess, getting mm. into fights all the time. Mm. Just uh, a real bully, honestly. And, and my mm. size didn't help me in any of that. So This guy, in case you don't know Nathan and you can't tell sitting down, he is 6'6". Six, six. Um, towers over me and I'm six feet tall. So big dude. Yeah, big dude. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, through help of my old youth pastor, Austin, um, shout out to Austin. I love you. Um, he helped me get out of some of that, you know, mm. um, just ministering to me, being a good person in general. Mm. Mm. You know, um, he was very smart, very educated. And like I said, you could just talk to him mm. mid-lesson. And he, mm. It seems like he almost always had the answers to mm. stuff. And mm. I know that's not the case, but it seemed yeah, like it. For sure. And it's nice to have somebody in your life like that who yeah, can help yeah. you out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, kind of helped out in the tough relationship spots, um, kind of grown from there, kind of grown out of seeing – Size is that immediate advantage, right? Um, which is is good. Um, that's awesome. So um, question for you then, having seen God work in your life that way, have you ever thought about what God may be calling you to after high school, right? Because you're a junior in high school, senior yeah. year's coming up. That's the question everybody's going to be asking. That's the question a lot of these guys are probably trying to figure out for themselves. Definitely. But have you ever thought about like or prayed about what God... Um, may have for your life i think about it all the time uh think about it more than i pray about it which probably isn't great but mm. that's okay mm. um you know i have bounced through many career options like i wanted to cook for the longest time mm. i wanted to go into the military for the longest time mm. um now not so much military may be an option still yeah um i want to own some sort of business small business though Ooh. i don't know how Big businesses get whenever. What would your small business be? Just off the top of the head. Definitely a coffee shop. Ooh, yeah, a small coffee shop. Yeah. I okay. don't know how to make coffee, but okay. I love coffee shops. All right, maybe a small coffee shop. Yeah, I okay. love them. Um, you know, I don't want to make it a big business because big businesses take up a lot of time, mm. and you know, it's and energy and money and everything, and it, it, I just wouldn't want it to be that stressful. Mm. So mm. Uh, a smaller business like that would mm. be perfect. And coming to camp here at High Street uh, mm. enlightened me to the fact that I would be a pretty good minister of some sort, and mm. that's definitely something I have the skill set for. I like to talk. I don't mind being face-to-face <laughs> -face with people. <laughs> I like to talk. <laughs> he does like to talk. <laughs> I, I don't mind being face to face with people, answering questions, having uh, debates, anything. Mm. So um, it's something that uh, I feel like I have the skill set for, definitely. Mm. Yeah. But I, I'm not necessarily like pulled or called to do it. I don't mm. think I'm just like getting like hinted to go at this. And, you know, that's mm. something I, I prayed about. I mean, I see this skill set that mm. God's given me, but until I feel an absolute definite calling for it, I'm not going to go into it. And mm. uh, because if I don't, I feel like that would drain me so fast. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you have to be called to ministry for sure. That's, that's something like if, if you just decide um, without praying about it and knowing that it's right for your life, you're right. It can be, it can be draining, but I love that it, that you're praying about it, that yeah. you're saying, Hey God, I recognize these skills in my life. Um, how do you want to use them? Cause you know what, maybe it is um, in full-time ministry, 
maybe you use those skills running a coffee shop. Hopefully, yeah. you know, um, my favorite baristas are the ones that talk to me, right? So yeah. maybe you could use it there. Um, but I love that you're praying about it, thinking about it, because it can be hard and confusing sometimes to figure out what God has for you. Um, but it's so important to to pray about and and, and work on figuring out. Definitely. So um, kind of wrapping up here, just a couple questions left. Um, but as you're kind of praying, as God's working on you, what's one thing that God is teaching you right now? So throughout my life lately, as most of them know, um, it's been pretty stressful. I got a lot on my plate right now. I'm doing mm. sports, I'm doing school and church and uh, my dad's been sick. So mm. there's been a lot of stuff going on with me lately. So mm. I'd say both faith and trust, you know, mm. um, and those two things go hand in hand, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I feel like being able to just put confidence in, in God and let mm. him take care of things. Like I have mm. all this stuff going on yet throughout most of it, I'm pretty relaxed yeah now granted through people who are in my life like my coaches or teachers or or youth leaders they are so understanding about that mm. and that that definitely helps absolutely but even even through that you would think it would still be the one of the most stressful things but i've been pretty calm throughout mm. all of it mm. and then just generally like being a blessing to somebody you know mm. just random like compliments even yeah or just hey have a nice day thank you yeah basic manners yeah and you know the way that that lights people's day up you mm. would you wouldn't believe it it's mm. crazy i love that um i love that first point of like faith and trust specifically because life can get hard we can be in these seasons that are really stressful and it's hard to just kind of give that all to god and be like you know what i really want to control this situation but at the end of the day, I can't. So yeah. God, would you do it? Um, and when we can kind of give it away is when we start to feel that that peace that surpasses all understanding, right? Yeah. That peace that doesn't make sense. Um, awesome. Last question, just to kind of wrap up. What piece of advice would you leave with our listeners? Piece of Nathan advice. Nathan advice right here. The, mo the, the best part. Listen in. Here we go. Okay. So I would say um, being a Christian in our day and age is one of, if not the most difficult times. Um, mm. There's a lot of ridicule or or like down talk about it and we mm. have all these expectations to live up to that really none of us ever can or will mm. um we tell people the best thing to read what is like the one thing people tell you to read whenever you're trying to get into it the gospels matthew mm. mark luke john mm. um go see how jesus lives tell me mm. what you think then and and you see this perfect example and mm. no one's ever going to live up to that, you know? So mm. just because you're not like praying, reading your Bible every single day, that doesn't mean you haven't given your life to Christ. And it's mm. very easy to get caught up into it, mm. but you got to be able to bounce back and, and know what mm. really is going on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Cause you're right. When you read the gospels, you see Jesus and you're like, wow, he lived a perfect and sinless life. Yeah. And we're told to like, try to live our lives like Christ. But then we read Romans 3.23 and it's like, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And you're like, oh, well, now well I didn't do that so perfectly. Um, but I love that is that it's a relationship, right? We got to work on it. We got to try to um, live Christ-like lives um, as, as Christians, but we're not going to do it perfectly. Um, and, and on the days we mess up, um, that's a good reminder is that, you know what, sometimes we may slip, we may mess up, but we still have a relationship with Christ and that doesn't change whether we're, we're saved or not. Yeah. So love that. Awesome. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for coming on the Youth Got Next podcast. Anytime. It's been a pleasure having you. Guys, uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe on this. Hit us with a comment if you have any questions for Nathan that uh, maybe I didn't ask. Maybe you're wondering Nathan's favorite color or fill in the blank. Hit us with a comment. Uh, we'll make sure to ask him. We'll, we'll get you that answer. Um, and then share this with anybody who needs to get to know Nathan a little bit better. You enjoyed watching it. Um, maybe share it with a friend. But um, we'll see you next time for the next episode of the Youth Got Next podcast.